Graph database popularity is on the rise due to its ability to manage and store complex relational data. Before we get hands-on with graph databases and dgraph, first, what is a graph database? Database that stores data in a graph structure. Some of you may be familiar with graphs already. They're our core data structure in computer science. But a graph database allows semantic queries. It also allows modeling data with nodes, also known as vectors and edges, referred to as predicates. Relationships also allow data to be linked directly. This is an example of an undirected graph. Notice that lines go between the nodes, but there are no directional arrows. This is an example of a directed graph. Notice that the arrows point in the direction of relationship. This is an example of a weighted directed graph. The weighted values do not have to be uh, numerical. They do not have to be floats. They can be anything that signifies some type of hierarchy. So what are the advantages of a graph database? Well, generally they're faster to query than relational database when the data relationships are complex, uh, even as, as trivial as two or three deep, where a relational database would have to uh, join several tables together to retrieve the same data. Uh, relational databases just traverse nodes. It's also fast for execution pattern matching, and it allows for real world modeling. Uh, for data sets, so it, it really mimics real world and the way that the human mind perceives information. So nodes are objects and edges are relations. So if you had a person, that would be a node, and their edges would be, say, a friend. So I, ha I would have an edge to a friend named John. I would have a node and John would have a node, and there would be a predicate or an edge between us. Now that doesn't mean that John would consider me as his friends, so it does not necessarily reciprocate. Graph databases are generally directed, and so is dgraph, but there is a way to reverse an edge. Facebook uses uh, graph databases to map a lot of their uh, relationships, friends of friends of friends, for instance. Edges can also have properties. Uh, they're called facets. It's considered taboo in relational databases to duplicate data, but sometimes it's necessary if there are several tables and the queries are complex. It helps uh, simplify the process and also speed up the process. So graph databases don't need to do that. Um, also, you know, document databases are or kind of the opposite. They sacrifice data duplication for speed and simplicity. Generally, the schema is easier to change depending on what type of node is being changed. So what are some of the disadvantages? Compared to relational databases and even document databases, some aggregation operations are slower, such as summing a column in a table. Also, separation of unrelated data requires extra care. But this is not very hard to overcome. There are some solutions. Um, either have a separate database for each or you can place it in the same database and the, the nodes just will not be connected. Although if the database has a lot of nodes, it may benefit to create another database so that the database will not have to traverse all the nodes. And it can be difficult to view a large amount of data stored in the database at one time. Graph databases also lack some of the data assurance policies common in relational databases, uh, such as ensuring uh, uniqueness. There are ways to do that. Um, upserts are one of those. So why dgraph over Neo4j or Cassandra or any of the other hybrids or graph databases? dgraph is written in Golang, so it takes full advantage of the concurrency ingrained in the Golang language. It provides parallel execution, so it's fast. It's also a distributed sharded. Originally, dgraph wasn't ACID compliant, but it is now. And they prefer to use SSD storage over RAM so it doesn't impact the system as much. It's been optimized for that. If you want to learn more about that, just visit dgraph.io. So what are the disadvantages of a dgraph? It's still a growing company. They often make uh, changes to their syntax and their client that may impact uh, existing applications. And they're still immature in some areas. So dgraph has three major components. Uh, zero, which is the orchestrator, it balances the predicates across nodes. Um, there's also some grouping involved. I urge you to look at the DGRAF documentation to find out more for, about that. Uh, and then you have the server, which is the actual data store. And then Retail is optional. Uh, if you use a client to access the server, 
data, then you really don't don't have to have it, but it is a convenient UI for accessing and querying the server data. Also, it's worth mentioning that since it's a truly distributed database, more than one zero and server can exist 